good morning. So I actually put on some makeup today. I don't know if you can notice, um, but that's because I have someone from the newspaper coming to do a one year follow up interview because the one year anniversary of Laura Farms is coming up so soon. April 23rd is the day that I created my YouTube channel. Um, so, I mean, I'll probably do like a one year anniversary video, but thanks so much for everyone who's made this journey so great so far. That's true. Okay, I'm just gonna start like fake filming a video. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so this is me fake filming a video for Cheyenne at the newspaper. Right here we have our whole planter set up. <laughs> First job of today, since it is way too cold and windy to spray, is flagging our seed corn fields. So we have boundaries and isolation that we can't plant in. And before we can get out here and plant, we gotta make sure we know where those are. So dad's got our little wheel out there. And I, my job is flag holder. I could use a hot coffee. <laughs> Keep up the good work, dad. Love to see that. Good job. Hi, Dad. Hi, Laura. As we drive to the other end of the field, I was wondering if you would help me explain what it means to be a seed corn grower. Yeah, I can do that. Are you going to go across the rows? <laughs> no, I was they, just turning I'll, around. I'll explain it while we bounce all, all the, way the way down across the rows in a field. Okay. What does it mean or what does it take to be a seed corn grower? What does it mean to be a seed corn grower? For someone who has no idea about anything. Okay. Lots of more work pain, effort, they tell you what to do, mostly. Uh, they who? Um, the company that you're growing for. Okay, okay. Um, so it means you grow the seed that another person is going to plant, right? Correct, we're, we are growing, the production that we're growing this year, uh, corn farmers will plant next year. So it's exactly what it says. Being a seed corn farmer means you are growing corn that'll be used as seed. Correct, and what we're doing is we're, we're creating hybrids. We're taking two genetics of two different plants and they will pollinate this year, creating a hybrid, which uh, will have great resistance to um, weeds and insects and yield quite a bit more and yield more by taking less nutrients and less water. So we've got really great genetic package out here that we're that we're building, putting together for farmers next year. So what you're doing is you take two types of plants. They're not actually male and female, but we just call them male and female to distinguish between the two. Yes. I should probably buckle up too. So you take two plants, you just say male and female, even though they don't actually have any uh, specifically male or female reproductive parts, and you're combining <laughs> Sorry, I so badly. If we were in another vehicle, no, never mind. Driving under a sprayer. Yeah. It's everyone's dream. Yeah, I know. Ken Block has done it. Uh, anyways, so you take the best of both of those parts genetics. So you take the strength from one plant and you take the good yields from another plant and you mix them together. That's correct. That's what we're doing. So anyway, so today as we're flagging out boundaries for fields, what we're doing is the genetics need a certain amount of isolation from different types of other corn plants and other things that are being planted around. We should be spraying right now. They're spraying right now. Yeah, I know it. Never, never watch the neighbors when they're when they're doing work. Yeah. Um, you're doing such a great job, Laura, explaining the question that you asked to me. <laughs> I just wanted your input. Yeah. Do you want to just take over my job? Well, let, let me finish. I get I get distracted. Um, um, painful and cumbersome. There's just a lot more work involved. You need to do, um, you need to be very, very particular because uh, we want to have a very um, pure product at the, yes. at the end of the day. So um, there's, there's lots more people kind of helping you and looking over your shoulder uh, to make sure we're getting it all right because what we're doing here is somewhat complicated, but um, it, it's worth it in the end. Uh, there is a premium payment that we get for doing all of this extra work and pain. So it's a nice little niche market, niche for 
um, a grower the size that I am. With so. having all the equipment for regular corn farming. It's just like corn farming with steroids, but you don't need that much more equipment to do it. Uh, not really. A little bit, but um, but that's okay. I, I like equipment, so but I, I don't like, mind machinery. It's like a niche market without like growing hemp where you would need all new equipment. That's a great point. Yeah, that's a great point. So um, a couple years ago, just stepped out of my comfort zone, trying something new, and I've done it every year since, and I will continue to do it um, every year because it's just it's something a little bit different and unique and something that I can specialize on and focus in. So it's worked out great for the seed company and it's been great for us. So yeah, there you go. I figured I'd explain what seed corn production actually is because what we're doing today, just setting our flags really isn't that exciting. Nice oh, coat. this is who we grow seed for right here. <laughs> <laughs> it's really fun watching dad from the pickup truck because I imagine this is what dad and grandpa feel like watching me do field work. It's so fun. So if you remember, we got this planter put in the shop. This is the planter that we call our box planter. Um, it's the planter that we use primarily. Uh, we have two other planters though. We're bringing our second nicest one in the shop now. Uh, this is the center fill planter, or we also call it the soybean planter, uh, cause that's the one that we most often use soybeans for. Um, but we're going to pull this in the shop and so we can start going through it. And here is the center fill planter in the shop. So as you can see, the box planter has those individual little seed boxes. Whereas on this planter, you just put all the seed right into this big tank here. And then it goes out onto all those little ones. So you only have to fill one spot instead of 16 spots. The last job for today is going to be filling up the sprayer and then dad can go out now that the wind has kind of calmed down a little bit. Dad can go out and spray while I go home and prepare myself for the next big day of work. <laughs> Okay, before I sign off on the end of this video, I went to the post office, clearly, and I wanted to show you guys some stickers that we got for our sticker bench, which is quickly filling up. Um, uh, this one came from, I'm not sure, a lot of people don't put their names on these, but here are the stickers. There go. This one also, uh, no name, but from someone in Florida, this little dancing cow. Um, uh, this one came from a Rob, um, uh, oh, from somewhere in Canada, we got all sorts, oh my goodness, some more Canada stickers, Harley Davidson, Death Wish Coffee, which I highly recommend, here, okay, uh, next, this is from, oh my goodness, I don't even know, people just don't put their names on things with a letter, um, okay, no stickers in that one, but a nice letter. This one came from Massachusetts, very nice. Looks like he sets up stage equipment, very cool. Say hi to Grant, remind him you need a truck already, working on that. And then this one, okay, it came from the Gage County Sheriff's Office, which is in Beatrice. And I got some uh, deputy stickers. And they sent me this sweet note. They like watching my channel at the station. And that just like, that makes me so happy. So I'm gonna put these stickers, whoo, put these stickers on the bench and it should be full really soon. Um, so thank you guys so much for sending me stickers to put on this. Thank you for watching to the end of the video. Uh, I'll see you in a little bit.